Next on BYU Sports Nation, aloha. We are live in Hawaii to kick off our BYU Football Bowl Week special. It's countdown to Christmas Eve. How does the outcome of the Hawaii Bowl impact your perception of the 2019 BYU football season? And will quarterback Zach Wilson's approaching bowl game performance affect his starting QB status in 2020? Let's go. This is BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from the Sheridan Waikiki in beautiful Hawaii, here's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live from the Sheridan Waikiki in beautiful Hawaii, your day-to-day play-by-play in studio paradise on Oahu, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Happy Friday, December 20th, wherever and however you're connected Wonderful to have you with us. Oh, my gosh. It is wonderful to be in Hawaii. (laughs) I am Spencer Linton, teamed up with the man who hates movie spoilers more than he hates the color red, Jerem Jordan. Ooh, probably. Uh, It is great to be here. Oh, man. Obviously, this is the best setup we've ever had. We've been to some cool locations, including Miami for the Miami Beach Bowl in 2014. Uh, But this is amazing. And so thanks to everyone in advance who's helped set this up from our crew to the Sheraton Waikiki. And everybody, we're going to be here today. We're going to have a show tomorrow, uh, right before the BYU basketball game. Uh, So 8 Eastern tomorrow, an hour leading up to that game, BYU-Weaver State. We're going to be here Monday and Tuesday. Obviously, countdown to kickoff in the postgame show as well. So this is a great spot. We've known that we could be here three years ago because it was Hawaii Bowl or a point steady in 2016. But here we are, and uh, we are excited to be here. Obviously, uh, an intriguing matchup with the home team, Hawaii, in this one. If you're trying to finish the season strong. Hey, uh, Hawaii in December, and you've been here for a little over 12 hours. What do you think of your first oh, impression of the islands? That's great, yeah. <laughs> you, you were on a different island. You were, you were at the Maui Classic for the ladies. Uh, they beat San Jose State, lost to fourth-ranked Oregon State. So you've been here a few days. Um, you caught a plane last night and hopped islands, and here you are. So let's let's here, party. Here we are, and the party is started. By the way, the party at some point you would think over the next few days for you, Jerem, will will feature Star Wars, right? That's right. Uh, I have tickets to go see it tonight, so I'm really excited. Am I more excited to be here <laughs> or to go to Star Wars? We will discuss. We will discuss. <laughs> How is that even a topic? <laughs> you can always come here. <laughs> you Star can Wars, always see the, Star Wars. Uh, no, this is only the 11th time in the history of the world one has come out. So, come on. Here is today's show lineup uh, featuring some Star Wars. Yes, for sure. How does Zach Wilson's bowl game performance affect more than just this season and his status as the starter moving into 2020? Plus, BYU's newest quarterback signee, Soljay Mayava, Why did the Hawaii native choose the Cougars over other programs? And he's from Honolulu. He went to Kahuku on the island here. Yeah. But uh, we're going to talk to him from Honolulu when we're here and he's not. Kind of, kind of a fun setup. Not to mention BYU football national champion fullback Thor Salanoa. Is the Cougars' rivalry with Hawaii still a thing? We're going to ask the former national champion at BYU how it compares today compared to what it was in the mid-'80s. Today's BYU Sports Nation headlines are definitely a thing. BYU football flying to Hawaii this morning, so we beat them here. The team lands in about seven hours. The countdown to an old rivalry renewing is on when the Cougars face Hawaii next Tuesday night on Christmas Eve, 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ESPN and BYU Radio. Right now, BYU is a two-point favorite, according to our friends in the Las Vegas desert. Football signing Cody Epps. We made a big deal about his signing. Well, USA Today has named him a first-team All-American. Check. How awesome is that? Epps put up an incredible senior season 93 catches 1735 receiving yards and 28 touchdowns my notes have that is excellent let's discuss former BYU footballers now in the National Football League Fred Warner and his San Francisco 49ers take on the LA Rams tomorrow part of a triple header Saturday in the National Football League Warner the NFC defensive player of the month in November has 44 tackles three sacks four tackles for loss three quarterback hurries two forced fumbles and a partridge in a pear tree yes Kyle Van Noy and the Patriots take on the Buffalo Bills on Saturday as well Sione Takitaki and the Cleveland Browns face MVP candidate Lamar Jackson and Baltimore on Sunday Harvey Longy and the Jets play Pittsburgh on Sunday as well Jeremy I'm not done Taysom Hill and the New Orleans Saints face Tennessee this Sunday Michael Davis and the LA Chargers take on AFC West rival Oakland 
Cleveland on Sunday, and Daniel Sorensen's Kansas City Chiefs, also in the AFC West, face the Chicago Bears. It's nice to have a lot of BYU football players contributing and playing well in the NFL. Indeed. And uh, in EuroLeague play, Elijah Bryant and Jimmer Fredette played each other. Maccabi Tel Aviv in Israel beat Panathinaikos of Greece. 88-79. Neither guy has scored in double figures. Bryant with nine points. Fredette with only seven. So uh, That's Jimmer, a low number for his Jimmerness. He's 0 for 2 against former BYU basketball players in EuroLeague, right? He lost to Brandon Davies mm-hmm. in Barcelona and drops a game to uh, Maccabi Tel Aviv. Let's go, Panathinaikos and Rick Pitino. Let's, go, let's get it right. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. Eight would be great, right? BYU football working for a noteworthy step forward, and by that I mean eight wins compared to last year's seven. That said, Jerem, how does the outcome of the 2019 Hawaii Bowl change your perception of the overall 2019 season? Either way, it's going to be a better year this year than it was last year because BYU beat Wisconsin. That was great. Wisconsin didn't finish ranked. BYU is going to finish uh, having defeated a team that's going to finish ranked. And USC, I believe they'll finish ranked. Uh, if they don't, it's still better because BYU beat USC and Boise State. Both of those teams should finish ranked. Yes, exactly. And uh, a nice win at Tennessee on the road, historic program, whatnot. Da, da, da. This season was better than last, regardless of what happens. BYU could lose 80 to nothing, and it was still a better season. I believe that BYU will compete and probably win <laughs> in this bowl game. It's will a, it really be better if BYU lost 80 to nothing it would in the feel bowl weird. game? I'm saying the overall season, okay, not one right. game, right? Uh-huh. One game doesn't define a season. Unless it's beating Utah, which now BYU is so desperate that if BYU did, it would define the season. No, the, the performance for BYU uh, will, weigh, will weigh into it, but even if BYU loses, to me, it's still a better season than last year. Now, five to ten years from now, when the average BYU fan looks back on 2018 and 2019, and they, they, say, they won't. Oh, seven wins <laughs> and... Uh, what did Kalani Sataki do when they got his... Co- oh, he, got, he had eight wins. Okay, yeah. They won't even remember progress. that part that he said. You're probably yeah, right. Yeah. There's one undeniable way to show progress. That's win more. BYU has that opportunity. I know that not all wins are created equally. Clearly, 2019 has more quality wins on the schedule than 2018 overall. Talking about two wins against currently ranked teams. And I think two teams that will finish in the final top 25 of the AP poll. And BYU had two wins against rivals. Coming into this season, Kalani Satake had one combined in the first three years. Now he's got a winning record against rivals. He's got another winning record at home. Yes, the seven wins are better than the seven wins last year already. But if BYU loses to San Diego State and Hawaii, two Mountain West Conference foes to close out the season, it would feel like a almost a sputtering kind of pathetic disappointment based on what we know this team is capable of and has done. So seven wins, yes, because the quality is greater, but I don't know how much different, how much progress it really would be because of how BYU finished the season. The, the feelings going into the offseason are real. If BYU doesn't win this bowl game, it's going to get super weird. Yeah, it's going to get really weird. And it feels kind of weird because of how BYU played against San Diego State, and, and we'll address that in a minute. BYU does need to finish the season strong. If BYU finishes with eight wins, it definitely feels better than progress. last year. If you dig into the details, it's obviously better than More last year. More progress. But I don't, I don't think BYU is close to where they want to be as a program. When BYU signed up for independence, they did not think they would be in this situation, which is eight or nine wins and somewhat irrelevant, right? Uh, certainly didn't think uh, there would be a streak to Utah like this. Certainly didn't think that Boise State would dominate. Certainly didn't think that BYU would never win a West Coast Conference championship in men ho- men's hoops. So BYU has taken a step back as a football program. Can they take a step forward? Can Zach Wilson and Jaron Hall and this crew and Kalani Sataki Renewed take a step forward? We shall see. We all felt like eight wins would be remarkable given the difficulty of the schedule. Right. I just hate that we're... I don't want to celebrate an eight-win season because no one else cares. Well, how much worse are you going to feel if BYU doesn't win the bowl game? I'm in Hawaii. I feel great about everything. I don't really (laughs) care right now. Again, the the ultimate way to provide success or status quo is 
to win more games Yay, or win the same amount 12. of games. Yeah. Like eight is greater than seven. It, that's that's the one metric that we can look at and say, yes, progress. Yeah. Thank you, math major. <laughs> After a three-point performance for the Cougar offense in the last game against San Diego State, it feels like the BYU offense is on this sort of social probation going into the Hawaii Bowl. So let's discuss this. Is quarterback Zach Wilson's off-season status as the starter dependent on his bowl game performance? No. He'll be the projected starter moving forward regardless of BYU winning this game or not. I mean, it would take some type of absolute falling on the face. BYU is anemic offensively. They do nothing right. Zach Wilson plays his worst game as a Cougar, and even then he would still be competing for the starting job, according to Jeff Grimes and to Kalani Sataki. Right, but would he lose his offseason start? Because right now he's a starter. Would he lose his offseason starter status? It would take his worst performance ever as a BYU Cougar to bring that into play. He'll be the projected starter moving forward. I don't think Zach Wilson's going to play poorly. I think he'll have a good game against Hawaii. And let's be honest, he should. Hawaii's defense is not great. BYU should score some points. I know it's a road game at the you know, Aloha Stadium in the Hawaii Bowl, but BYU's offense should do some things. They should certainly be better against Hawaii's defense than San Diego State. Well, yes, San Diego State was top 10. Holy cow. Zach's the guy. All of the comments from the BYU coaches would firmly suggest that he's going to be the guy for the foreseeable future. Now, what I do think could happen is if BYU loses this game and he doesn't play well, albeit it's not his worst performance ever, his leash just gets a little bit shorter. He's still the guy, but the room between Zach and the second string quarterback gets that much smaller. Because Jaron Hall and Baylor Romney perform so well, there is pressure on Zach Wilson sure. to do well. I think there's good pressure on him. <sighs> Take it how you want. If if he performs well, now we're talking, right? Um, in terms of, okay, Zach is the guy. There is a question being asked by people right now about Zach Wilson as the starter. I think I'm with you. I think that Zach Wilson will have a good game in the Hawaii Bowl, and this will be a moot point. But the point with BYU football is that only once in Independence has BYU gone through a full season with one starting quarterback all year. You need two. This year, BYU needed three, yeah. and they have three. They might even have four. We're going to talk to the fourth, Soljay uh, Maya- Mayava, coming up later in the program. BYU's going to have four scholarship quarterbacks going into next year. They've already given Baylor Romney a scholarship. I think that Zach Wilson is the starter at Utah next year, almost regardless, almost regardless of what he does. Yes, it would take this epic meltdown performance. He'd have to lose all confidence. That's not going to happen. That won't happen, but he he could lose. uh, Like, even if he was... The only thing bar, the only thing that would prevent Zach Wilson from starting at Utah in game one next year is an injury. That's the only thing. And right now, you look at Zach and you go, okay, he had two torn labrums in high school, played freshman year, had a really nice freshman year against an easier schedule in the back half, played the tough part of the schedule at the beginning. BYU went two and three in those starts. He didn't finish the last drive against Toledo, but that's a loss. He's a starter, right, for, for uh, all but one series in that game. So that was a tough start, but we knew it was a tough schedule. He had what Tanner Mangum had to deal with last year, by the way. He had to face the tough schedule. Jaron Hall and Baylor Romney didn't have ah, to face that part as five much, right? Killers. But Baylor can go, uh, I beat Boise State. Yeah, that's a rank so, win. So, yeah, there's no excuse at this point. The- I, I, I'm, I'm excited to see this offseason because we are going to have three capable quarterbacks. And if, if BYU played Baylor Romney as the starting quarterback, I think we'd all be like, you know what? I expect BYU to to do decently. Jaron Hall, the ceiling is, is high for Jaron, but we don't know what he can do in a full season. We've seen him in like... A game and a half, and he was really good in that. The most indicative teller of Zach Wilson being firmly in control is the fact that he hasn't really been healthy, and yet BYU has still opted to go with him, whether it's a thumb, his shoulder hasn't been all the way back. They still think he's the best guy, even though he hasn't been 100% healthy. I think that's because Jaron Hall wasn't ready. I think against uh, San Diego State. Whatever the reason, Zach's been the guy. Yes, and the coaches are telling us that the leash is long. Right, but the fans, it feels yeah. like the leash yeah. is short. Yeah, the the point is that you win the game, and trust me, Kalani Sake would would yank any quarterback that is performing poorly if it meant that a change of pace would me- help sure. BYU win that game. I don't care who it is, and that's the way you have to play it. Is it doesn't matter whoever is going to win you that game needs to play that game. Well, Zach With ego Wilson. and. Uh, off the field, whatever, uh, be darned, right? Zach Wilson was the guy that going into last offseason was 
the second coming of Jim McMahon or Ty Detmer based oh on gosh. what he did in the bowl game. And we were cautious to point out, like, don't let this one game shape everything. It was one game against Western Michigan, albeit it was a record-setting bowl no, performance. No, we bought into it. We all did. To finish out his freshman <laughs> season. We so, all yes, bought in. On to topic three, 18 for 18 in BYU's blowout win over a bad Western Michigan team. By the way, Honolulu greater than Boise in December. Um if anybody was ever, are ever you, are you wondering sure about, about Are you sure about that? <laughs> All the Boise natives are like, yeah, we agree. By the way, we have like some exotic fish right behind, uh-huh. literally a foot away. Koi pond. Yeah. yeah this is way better than fish pond. Be. Can uh-huh. we just stay here? Don't step in it, Michael Do Scott, we have okay? to go back to Provo after this? Is that a thing we have to do? Or can we just stay here? It's perfection, as was Zach Wilson's performance in last year's bowl game. Nice BYU transition. fans hoping for something similar this year. My question now is, what would the equivalent of last year's 18-for-18 18 18 performance against Western Michigan and Boise look like for Zach Wilson against Hawaii in the Hawaii Bowl? Okay, if he went 18-for-18 18 18 again, that would be equivalent. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, come uh, on. This, yeah. I mean, these, these opponents are different, I think, though. It is. You're right. Um, Hawaii is 9-5, and five, by the way, because they played nine home games. This would be the ninth home game. Hawaii's better like, than Western Michigan. And they've been better on the road. I think they were 3-1 and one in conference okay. play okay. Right? on the road. They've been They way- beat San Diego State, by the way. Yeah, here. Well, San Diego State missed a field goal tie at the very end. But anyway, I think if Zach Wilson threw six touchdown passes, that, that would be the equivalent. Whoa. Where it's this massive performance. If some, if any other player had five touchdowns, like Cody Hoffman, New Mexico State 2012 kind of deal, then that would be – because what did 18 for 18 do? It had this huge national splash, conversation in the offseason, da, da, da. If that happened with, like, Gunnar Romney, five touchdowns, we go, oh, Gunnar Romney's the leading receiver coming up. We would make a – what we mean is, what what would we overblow after the game, the whole offseason, going into next season? That's what we're it, really asking. Take it. Well, given that Zach Wilson has had not had great numbers, I mean, how many touchdown passes does he have this season? 11, 11? I believe. Yeah, right? I was going to say 10 or 11. 11? So he's going to throw... 11 in eight games. He's going to throw more than half of his season yeah. total in one game, and that would be the equivalent of 18 for 18? Yes. See, my numbers are a little bit lower. Hey, if Zach Wilson comes out and throws four touchdown passes and throws for over 300 yards and no interceptions, and he has thrown a lot of interceptions, that touchdown-to-interception ratio is not great right now. Again, level of competition, better. I get it. Has been great. Got off to a really bad start against Utah. But if he goes four touchdowns, no interceptions, over 300 yards, 75% in a road win, Again, this is a road game against Hawaii in their home stadium. That's what they do. They play neutral thir- side. They play 13 bowls, 11 here. This is what they do. 75%, 300-plus, four touchdowns, no interceptions. I think that would create buzz. Like, oh, Zach Wilson's back. He's it, healthy. He had four weeks to get healthy after the season. Three and a half weeks, his arm's feeling better, his thumb's better. Now, this is the Zach that we're used to. He shows up in big bowl games. Yeah, and then all he of a sudden. He shows up in big bowl games? Okay. Sorry, what bowl games are BYU playing in that are big again? <laughs> my BYU hasn't exa- played a big bowl game exactly, since the Cotton Bowl. My point exactly about last year's famous Idaho Potato Bowl. It was 18 for 18 against a terrible Western Michigan team. But it was everybody bought in. Everybody bought in. We all, well, and BYU and fans he, would do the same thing because this is a better bowl game or at least a better bowl opponent he, than BYU faced last he year. He was a freshman, so he was get, he was graded on a different curve, which, by the way, congrats all to the BYU students for finishing finals. Yes. Today is the last day, I believe, of finals. I've kind of lost track because I don't take classes anymore. But <laughs> we, all, we all graded him on a curve because he was a freshman. Now that he, it's a sophomore, you're with everybody else. You can't be good for a sophomore, right? It's different. Four you got to be good. No Among picks. everybody yes. else. Yeah, yeah. Four touchdowns, no picks. That would feel like a stark it, it contrast would. to the season. It would, but it wouldn't be this big splash that 18 for 18 was. Everyone was talking about it. And BYU was the only game. This is the only game. It's Christmas Eve. Hopefully people are watching, you know, on Christmas Eve. Like, that could be a family time. Hopefully people oh, are man. watching on ESPN. Right? I mean, he's thrown 11 touchdown passes all season. Four yeah. would give him 15. That would four. be more than a... Th- four is like the average that Hawaii opponents have, right? <laughs> But it hasn't mattered. They've been in some shootouts this year. All right. Let's hear from you and go to Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. All right. We're searching for the bowl game Jedi. Maybe it's Zach Wilson. Maybe he is the Jedi and shows up. Rise of Skywalker shows up. Which, by the way, the sun is coming up here in Honolulu. Oh, 
This is amazing. Focus. We're like focus, in the focus. D- We're almost done. Then you then you can go watch. Why? This what time is this over realize. again? Why can you right here? We can just walk out onto the beach. Yes. Which BYU Cougar is most likely to be a Jedi in the spirit of Star Wars: The Rise of Skywalker? In theaters now. In theaters now. Let's go. At CL underscore Living answers on Twitter. Jetty Jedi Tuiloma. Oh. Because his name's Jetty? I like it. Number 51, defensive line. Or Solofa Solo Funa. Oh, that's good. That's number next 48, level. linebacker. Actually, all Elite of the Poly- Nam? He says, actually, all of the Polynesian names fit the requirement. Lopini Katoa even went on an independence mission to Independence, Missouri. Missouri, that's exactly Hashtag right. Hashtag BYUSN. Okay, I'll tell you who I, who I think the answer to this is coming up. Okay. Plus, why did top 25 dual threat quarterback Solje Mayaba Pick BYU in an already loaded underclassman quarterback room. And Thor Salanoa, former BYU fullback, national champion, and Hawaii native on the rivalry between the Rainbow Warriors and Cougars in 2019. This is BYU Sports Nation, live from the Sheridan Waikiki. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Tune in to BYU TV Christmas Eve for Countdown to Kickoff Live from Hawaii as the Cougars prepare to take on the Rainbow Warriors. We will be live one hour before the game on BYU TV. Live from Aloha Stadium as the Cougars get ready for the Rainbow Warriors. We are live from Studio Paradise at the Sheraton Waikiki. It's starting to rain a little bit. In Hawaii. And that's okay. On the beautiful island of Oahu. That's okay. Yeah, it's rain. It's it's, it's a warm rain. Ducks a flying in behind drizzle. us. Yeah, this is great. Things are good. Way better than Studio B. I'm Spencer Linton alongside Jerem Jordan. Good to be in Hawaii. Hawaii countdown to Christmas Eve for BYU football. Joining us now to do so is former BYU fullback in the mid '80s, Thor Salanoa, national champion Thor. on the 1984 team. Yeah. Thor, great to have you with us. It's good to be in your homeland. Well, it was great to have me uh, here on you guys' show. It was the first time for me, and uh, I'm just pretty pretty excited. When we drove in this morning, me and my kids, uh, I told them, "Hey, I don't know what the show. We're just going to find out. I think it's a BYU cookie show." So. <laughs> As long as BYU, um, I'm, I'm here. Fantastic. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that you have the greatest first name of any guest that we've ever had on the show. Yeah, we, it's not raining. We bring on the God of Thunder yeah. name, yeah, Thor. It starts to all rain a little bit. Rain. It's not a rain. coincidence. What, so your parents name you Thor. I mean, w- when you're little, what's the best joke you hear? What's the be- you, you take some strength with that name? Uh, I do. I, I, I took it as, uh, I guess, uh, comic books. You know, My friends used to tease me, you're a comic guy. Yeah, but... <laughs> But I'm real in this, in, in skin. Right? <laughs> You're gonna feel it. Yeah. Uh, so I also had a, I met uh, Thor Christensen, and he was a uh, he was a football player from BYU back in the days when I was there too. And he asked me where'd, you, where'd I get my name. I said, oh, comic book. He's from uh, he's from North uh, uh, or uh, Ireland, and his name came from his parents. And I said, oh, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little closer to the source of Pretty there, much, right? yeah. Yeah, the Viking. Pretty much. At least you weren't named uh, by mm. Thor's hammer name. Mjolnir or whatever it hey, is. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> that was the name of your right fist, I think. Right? No, no, no. <laughs> the hammer is at home with the mom. <laughs> <laughs> Thor Salanoa with us on BYU Sports Nation. We're live from the Sheridan Waikiki, previewing BYU and Hawaii in the Hawaii Bowl on Christmas Eve. What was your reaction to the news that BYU would play Hawaii for the first time ever in a bowl game format? I called, I, I told my kids, oh, BYU's coming down? I'm going to call Jack the Mooney up right now. I need some tickets. <laughs> I'm going to call Coach Sitake up. And uh, could I get some sideline passes? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just happy that they, they got invited to a bowl game or, you know, at least get to show the kids' talent and everything. You know, with all this stuff that's going on about the college kids making extra money and stuff, it's kind of crazy, but... Uh, they need to they need to expand you know expand a little bit more and just all the talent that we got over here from 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 BYU. Hawaii's tough, but I got to roll with the Cougars, man. I'm a Cougars. Of course, of course. Till I die. And le- and let's talk about that element of it because obviously a ton of history not only with BYU and Hawaii back in the WAC when you played in the Mountain West and right. whatnot, but. Uh, now they get a meet up, and Hawaii is better this year. Uh, what, what are the locals saying about this team this year from Hawaii? They're telling me that they're going to beat BYU. Right? <laughs> of course, of course they, they are. So I'm always telling them, oh, we're going to find out. We're going to find <laughs> out. Uh, I remember now they beat some good teams up there in the mainland. They beat USC. They was good. Uh, Hawaii, yeah. Boise State beat Hawaii twice. BYU beat Boise State. 
Yeah. I know that's what I'm trying yeah. to tell them. Man. Yeah. Hey, don't take these guys for life. For life, you know, being be life. Just don't take nobody easy, that's all. Well, BYU is certainly preparing to make this a business trip. That has been priority number one for Kalani Sataki, especially because the Cougars lost to San Diego State. It kind of changed the mindset. They've all used the phrase locked in to beating Hawaii and getting to eight wins on the season. Uh, within that context, you've been a part of the rivalry, as Jaron mentioned, for a long time. Yeah. What's the rivalry like right now compared to what it was like when you played at BYU? Um, it's, back then, I think it was more personal. You know, um, a lot of the, the people that left the islands, um, you know, Kurt Goville, uh, myself, Hawaii was angry. I mean, they, they wanted us to stay home, but... You know, uh, Lavelle Edwards, man, a great guy. He just, I don't know, he just touched all of us in our hearts, I guess, you know. And, and stuff that he did for us, uh, especially for me, he helped me out a lot. And I appreciate the man. Never going back on him. Yeah, and how was your decision received by your peers when you said, I'm going to play for Lavelle Edwards in BYU. Well, of course, they all want you to stay and play for your island team. Yeah. Uh, well, nine of nine of my uh, high school, I, there was nine players exactly that got scholarship from from UH, and we all went to the same high school. I was the only one that signed with BYU. And I said, hey, my mother wants me to get away and go to BYU, so I'm going to listen to my mom. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, Mama knows best, uh, and also Mama knows about that national championship ring that you have, and those other eight guys don't. Yeah, Mama has has the ring too. <laughs> <laughs> Give us an idea of what that was like for you, because your senior year is '83 in high school. I take it. Steve Young, BYU beats Missouri. It's exciting, right? And then you go to BYU, and that freshman year, you win the national championship. Oh man, that, that was my sophomore year. That was my sophomore week. Ooh, that was. It was a, it's quite an experience. Uh, Mike Holmgren was our OC. Um, Robbie Bosco, quarterback. Not the most skillful quarterback that you could tell, but you know what? Robbie can play some basketball. He can play some <laughs> good man. Good man. Robbie, real good. Vice Sikahama, Kelly Smith. Back then, it was a lot more personal. I guess people was hating on us because they started using that... Um, that Ghostbusters logo thing about BY who? You know what I remember? Ghostbusters logo? You remember? We were one and two years old, so we do not. Oh, man, please forgive me. Man. No, it's okay. We need to go find we're, this now. BY who with the Ghostbusters right. logo? I didn't yeah. want to date you, but I had to do it. Yeah. They used to go BY who? Oh, man, that used to just tear us apart. I mean, I'm looking at Todd Shell. I'm a freshman looking at Todd Shell, and he's the linebacker, and uh, I got uh, Glenn Kozlowski. Dave, oh man, Gordon Hudson, these guys, that's my, that's who I, that's who made me. I'm them, you know? Yeah. I, I watch them play. You know, I got beaten up from Gordon Hudson every day in practice. <laughs> <laughs> he used to always go, come here, come here, Polynesian. <laughs> Glenn, Glenn Kozlowski, born in Honolulu, by the way. Oh, yeah, that's he was. Cool. Yeah. He was, but he was raised by BYU. Yes, he was. Yeah. yeah. BYU born. No. Let, let's talk about the greatest defensive play ever, uh, Kyle Morrell, 84. So, so, so you're on the sideline. What do you remember in that moment when Kyle Morrell flies over at the goal line to save the season? I, I just went nuts because as soon as I saw I knew Kyle, I knew what Kyle was going to do because he does that at practice. You know what I mean? He, oh, he, did, he did it at practice? He does it. He'll do crazy things in practice. Like what? Like fly over from – I know Coach didn't call no bliss, but he's flying from the outside trying to go after the quarterback. <laughs> and that's the, that's the great player that he is. You know, he, he had Kyle Morrell. That was an unreal play that he did. And I don't think you ever seen anybody else in college do that, that type. They try. They try to copy it, but yeah. they don't have the timing right. The, the only guy I've seen do anything close to that is Bobby Wagner with the Seahawks has blocked some field goals where he jumps over the line. They've now made that play illegal. Yeah, yeah. You, you can't touch them. He would jump on their back, but now you have to cleanly get over. Yeah, I think Lamar Arrington did it at Penn State way back in the. Yeah. It's just it's such a rare so thing. Rare. It is. Yeah. It is. And um, and Kyle was a rare kind of player. Man. I mean, he made things go. Yeah, and he's he's now battling, uh, I believe, ALS now, but got to run out the flag with the '84 captains, right. Jim Herman and Glenn Kozlowski and Robbie and those guys. That was. 
on a golf cart this year. It was a pretty emotional, cool thing. I know you, you love those guys. Oh, man, I do. I do anything for those guys, especially Robbie, too. Yeah. Well, and you're going to run out the flag for the bowl game. So right. how, hey, do you feel, awesome. how do you feel about that type of responsibility and honor? I'm trying to see uh, what kind of help they're going to put me with. Uh, <laughs> am I using a golf cart or am I using a motorcycle? Hey, you're, you're guaranteed you're the sideline pass, right, because you're running out the flag. <laughs> I'm going to run out the flag, yeah. So we're talking about running from the locker room all the way to the middle field? Probably just the edge of the field, I'm guessing. But that if you want to start in the locker room, that would be next level. <laughs> I don't think anybody's going to tell you no. If you want to know, I'm starting in the locker room, okay? You, you know my name's Thor, right? Like, <laughs> you don't even need a pass. You just walk down there. Yeah, right? Thor. Yeah. Everybody has a weak spot. <laughs> <laughs> Thor Salanoa with us on BYU Sports Nation. If it's not the Kyle Morrell flipping over the center tackle to beat Hawaii, BYU wins that game 18-13. What is your favorite memory of playing for BYU in Aloha Stadium or being a fan watching BYU play in Aloha Stadium? Hmm. Yeah, it would have to be probably, um, uh, I think it was uh, our senior year. Our senior year, we playing at Hawaii. He's fourth down, and I think he caught the Fukabas on the one-yard line, and he's got to get in to beat us. He didn't get in. <laughs> I just yelling at Jason and Sean, like, hey, they're going to give it to me, Kote, so let's key on that guy right there. Sure enough, he didn't get that one yard, though. So it was another one-yard stop that won the game yeah. for BYU they, when you were a senior. Was that when they yeah. went for two for the win or something, yeah, right? for two. Yeah, they yeah, tried to go yeah. for two. Big stop. Yep, get the win. Incredible. Thor, it's great to talk to you, man. Same here. Thanks for having me, yeah, gentlemen. Nice to meet you, and thanks Next for time I talk up. to you, I want to be up there in Utah. That's okay. Why, you know? Oh, hey, we, we would well. love that. Yeah, my We'd wife. actually prefer to be here, but okay, we'll do it. <laughs> oh, come on over anytime. <laughs> Call me up and stay at my house. I love it. I love it. Jeremy, seriously, might take you up on that after his first four. 14 hours. Let me get your number after. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thor, great Thanks, talking to you. Thank you. Okay, coming up, we're going to talk to someone from Honolulu, but they're not here. They're in D.C. Soljay Mayaba, the new quarterback signee, live from D.C. Makes total sense. Yep. That we're here. The Hawaiian guy that's Kahuku in kid. D.C. and yeah. we're here in Honolulu. Uh, by the way, speaking of long distances, Eric Mika has a day in China. Details forthcoming. This is BYU Sports Nation. Basketball hosts Weber State tomorrow night, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Since we're on the islands, 3 Hawaiian. You're, you're welcome, Neil uh, Everett, on Pal <laughs> TV and BYU Radio. Catch a special Saturday at BYU Sports Nation. We'll be live right before that at 8 Eastern, 2 Hawaiian. Okay, I appreciate that. You're doing some serious math. In well, listen, I may stay here. My wife doesn't know it. I might just stay here. <laughs> Happy, Merry Christmas. Yeah, honey, we're moving to Hawaii. Merry yeah. Christmas. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep it rolling on BYU Sports Nation live from the Sheraton Waikiki. We're so happy to be here, if you couldn't tell, and we're happy to present today's whip. Whoopsh! It's time for the Cougar Whip Around Football. Maybe case, you heard. In case you missed it, BYU yeah. playing Hawaii in the Hawaii Bowl. Can't kick kickoff live 7 Eastern 4 Pacific that day. Radio pregame an hour before that. Currently, BYU a two point favorite in Vegas. Cody Epps, BYU recent signee and wide receiver, becomes a first-team All-American, according to USA Today Sports. The modern-day high school product from L.A. had 93 catches, over 1,700 yards receiving, and 28 touchdowns. Mm. Uh, wow. Epps passed on Oregon, Oregon State, USC, Washington. It, well, it wasn't offered by all those Sorry, schools. Recruited by them. Interest, yeah. Sure. Hawaii, UNLV, San Jose State, but he chooses BYU. He definitely was a quote-unquote Pac-12 receiver that ends up in Provo. Oh, yeah. Cougars in the NFL. Fred Warner and the Niners play the Rams tomorrow. Go Rams. Kyle Van Oyen and the Patriots play the Bills tomorrow as well. Sione Takitaki and the Browns play the Ravens on Sunday. And Harvey Longy and the Jets play the Steelers. Taysom Hill and the New Orleans Saints take on the Tennessee Titans on Sunday. Michael Davis and the Los Angeles Chargers of San Diego face AFC West rival Oakland, the Raiders. Yeah. Also on Sunday. And Daniel Sorensen with his Kansas City Chiefs out of the AFC West have a showdown with the Chicago Bears this weekend. Cougars in pro hoops. Elijah Bryant and Jim Fredette squared off in EuroLeague play. Maccabi Tel Aviv upending Panathinaikos 88-79. Bryant had nine points. Fredette only seven. Eric Mika, well, it wasn't his 30-plus points that he had a few days yeah, ago. Yeah, only. But 12 points, that's 8 it. rebounds. He's Come 2 on, rebounds man. shy of a double-double and a Zin Jong win. So his team won. Mm-hmm. And that's what he's going to say is most important. They no, knock off. No, it's not. He's out to get his. Come on. The Zin Jong Flying Dragons. Men's basketball. 
As mentioned, BYU hosts Weber State tomorrow, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific on BYU TV and BYU Radio. We'll be live an hour before. BYU is 21-0 and in Provo against the Wildcats. Women's basketball. The Cougars lose to number four in undefeated Oregon State last night at the Lahaina Civic Center in Maui, 65-34. Brenna Drollinger had 14 points to lead the Cougars. I encountered a very weird stat. BYU led this game after the first quarter 11-4. Everything's Compelling good, right? Rich. Uh, the Cougars were outscored 61-23 over the final three quarters. You were there in Yikes. Maui. Soccer. Michaela Coolhan is one of four finalists for the Class of 2020 Honda Sport Award. The winner of the award becomes a finalist for the Collegiate Women Athlete of the Year. 40 minutes down, 20 minutes to go on our countdown to Christmas Eve kickoff on a Friday in Hawaii from the Sheridan Waikiki, and we've got more fantastic stuff on the way. Well, you be the judge of that. We think it's good. Why did Soljay Maiava want to join an already loaded quarterback room? We'll discuss coming up. Uh, yes, and... That future quarterback will tell us what his first impression of BYU was as a Hawaii native. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, the official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Coming up on December 27th, BYU Sports Nation special as we unveil our BYU football all-decade team, noon Eastern, 9 Pacific, that day on BYU TV and BYU Radio. And who is the... All-Decade MVP. Find out December 27th. Our question of the day on the social media platforms is, which BYU Cougar is most likely to be a Jedi? This in the spirit of the rise of Skywalker in theaters now. Yeah, we should have asked them to pay for this free pub. Oh, wait, they don't need it. Like, they're good. (laughs) Yeah. I want to be the marketing manager on a major movie like that. Like, everyone knows. You don't even have to put anything out Who's the marketing manager for Star Wars? Do they even need one? Uh, Yeah. You've got a huge task ahead of you. (laughs) Yeah, this is going to be hard. We need to get the word out. (laughs) Do people... Is our question assuming that they are Jedi and we didn't know it? Is that what we're saying? I don't know how far you want to take it. Would be? Because how nerdy do you want to make this? Is implies that they already are, right? (laughs) At WD Heath 40 on Twitter. Jimmer, there's no other way than the force to make those shots consistently. That, that Apparently you didn't have the force yesterday. I mean, yeah. He only scored seven. Yeah, well, well, maybe it was a BYU <laughs> thing. I don't know. Because this is a BYU-centered question. Yeah, it didn't right? work in the NBA, but it worked in China. <laughs> it, it, it's working yeah. in Grace for the most part. I think that's good. We all love the Jimmer. Yeah. Uh, my answer to this question is Cosmo. Okay. Have you seen, Cosmo. Had, have, you, okay. have you seen Cosmo uh, perform? Have you seen him dunk from the three-point line, standing on shoulders? Have you seen him dance? Have you seen him go viral? This guy's clearly uh, next level something, and it might as well be a Jedi. These, I like, these I like ducks that are extremely distracting. I to me. like that They're answer. They're like four feet away, splashing in the water. Okay. I'm like, I want to dive don't in worry. there too. Don't worry about the koi fish. Don't worry about the ducks. I'm not worried <laughs> at all. I've, I literally have zero worries. <laughs> yeah. This is the most relaxed I've been in a long time. In a long time. <laughs> Jeremy did this more than most. <laughs> yeah, this is great. No, normally uh, I'm good. All right. Uh, more of your Jedi responses coming up. Wait, hold on. At Jack Van uh, w- Wokum on Instagram. Jerem Jordan. Okay. Uh, Jerem Jordan I, is the Jedi. I would like to publicly announce that I'm not. But are, are you now, are you turned to a Sith or? <laughs> I, uh, listen, depends on the day. But uh, yeah, in Hawaii, I, you're I a Jedi. To use, I, wanted, I wanted to use my anger. In Hawaii, you're a Jedi. Now, after BYU lost to South Florida in mid-October, probably more towards the Sith than to More the like spectrum. Kylo Ren when he takes the lightsaber <laughs> to all the equipment there and just like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Oh, the optics are fantastic. Hey, let's play Would You Rather. Let's do it. It's Would You Rather on BYU Sports Nation. Presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. Jerem, first one. Would you rather BYU's offense put up 400-plus total yards or BYU's defense hold Hawaii to 10 points or fewer? 400 is not a ton of yards, so 10 points, clearly. Uh, Hawaii is coming off of a uh, 10-point performance against Boise State. That was a season low. BYU coming off of a season low three, by the way, against San Diego State. Didn't BYU put up like 400 yards against San Diego State and lose with only three points? 400 is not... 400 is a, a... It's a decent amount. It's not like amazing, right? Um, And it's more about points. I will go 10 or less. In fact, Hawaii has not won a Hawaii Bowl where they didn't score at least 40. 
So hold Hawaii it's, it's to under 30, 40, and that's lost, your winning formula. <laughs> they've lost every game where they scored 35 and under. <laughs> yes. Uh, hold, hold the Rainbow Warriors to under 40, and you'll probably win the game. That seems like a good formula. Um, I would rather BYU's defense hold the Hawaii to 10 or fewer. Uh, as excited as BYU fans got about Zach Wilson going 18 for 18, BYU fans against this Hawaii offense in Hawaii to win an eighth game holding the Rainbow Warriors to 10 points or fewer. That would be incredible. That would be an incredible storyline. 13th in total offense, 6th in passing. <laughs> that would be a big deal. Yes. Okay, would you rather Zach Wilson go 18 for 18 on Tuesday or Yoli Childs get the triple-double tomorrow against Weber State? Uh, that's easy. Zach Wilson go 18 for 18 Me on too. Tuesday. No contest. It's, it's a Weber State. Now, if BYU were playing like Kansas or somebody. Or Kentucky. Or <laughs> you'd be Kentucky. How did that happen? good for wow. BYU's uh, net ranking, by the way. BYU into the top 40 Ken Palm ratings. They're number 38. Let's go. They're number 30 in the basketball power index. As good as it's been for, for BYU and for Yoli Childs since he returned, 18 for 18 in the bowl game would do way more for the overall status of BYU football and the athletic program than Yoli Childs putting up a triple-double against Weaver State. Yes, 18 for 18 for sure. <clears throat> what was more impressive about what Zach Wilson did in Boise, though, was what he did with it. It was 300 yards passing, right? It, 18 is not a lot of completions. And four touchdowns. Right. That's what matters, the points. BYU uh, got, what, to high 40s in that one, which is awesome. So They were losing 10-7 to seven at halftime. Listen, triple-doubles are awesome. But they're more awesome when you're bored, right? Yeah. The Kyle Collins were triple-double thing was awesome because we had some context of these boring games with Pacific and Pepperdine <laughs> in January and February. Come on. All right. Next one, Jerem. Uh, this one is especially for you because it centers on the rise of Skywalker. Would you rather attend a traditional Hawaiian luau tonight mm-hmm. or go see Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker while you're in beautiful Hawaii. Well, I can go to a luau any night that I want to here. But can you go to Hawaii anytime? Yeah. Yeah, I can. And and you can't see Star Wars anytime you want? Uh, Not the opening night. So... (laughs) Tonight, I'm going to Star Wars at 7.30. That's incredible. You don't want to sell your ticket and, like, go later? So, Jeremy, I can go to the luau tomorrow. <laughs> I can go to the luau Monday or Tuesday. It comes out technically today. Uh, I got to see it today. I thought about going last night. but Yeah, I, why didn't wh- you see it last night? Because it came out just, Thursday night. Just too tired. You're too tired. It technically comes out today. You're right. I could have gone last night. I knew I'd be tired. Listen, I checked into the hotel. I was done. I was ready, <laughs> which is funny. Why do we get tired on an airplane just sitting down? I don't know. It's not like we're exercising or running it's somewhere. Well, the stress of traveling in general I kind of spends energy. I don't have to change my kid's diaper on this trip. You know, you know what, what I mean? Yeah, you know, you don't have an excuse because I yeah. literally got to the hotel and crashed and woke up two and a half hours later to get ready for the show. <laughs> yeah, we were up and at him at uh, 440 in the lobby. Let's go, so man. What I'm saying is you could have gone to Star Wars last night and probably still been in bed before me last night. Yeah, well, I chose not to. I'm going tonight. <laughs> I'm going tonight. Chewie's angry, man. Well, I, listen, we're going to the Polynesian Culture Center today. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be great. <laughs> We're here, we're here, and through Tuesday night, we're ready. I get to get back for Christmas Day. This is the best thing ever. I great. love it. It's great. Okay, now, this is this might be our two. This might be the greatest week for you ever. Next to your wedding week, this might be the greatest week for you ever. Star Wars and your first trip to Hawaii. Like, what's what's going yeah, to beat that? What's going to beat that? Uh, BYU getting a Power Five invite, probably. That's sorry. I'm not Jason. <laughs> that would be great. I would love. I would love to be six and six every year in the Pac-12. That'd be great. Okay, back to our question of the day, which is, uh, which BYU Cougar is most likely to be a Jedi? We've yeah. already heard it. Jimmer, Jerem thinks it's Cosmo the Cougar. I think Cosmo. Which really picking up I'm here? I'm pretty I think, sure that I think Ty Thor, Detmer. Thor was, get mad. What happened? I'm Thor's pretty sure that here? Ty Detmer was a Jedi. Like, how else does a kid 5'10", 185 from Texas guy? win yeah. the Heisman Trophy in 1990? That's uh, incredible. At Twiggy or Stone answers, Yoli Childs clearly was using his Jedi powers to levitate in his 2018 dunk against Utah. Ooh, yeah. Hashtag BYUSN. I like that. Mm-hmm. I like that. Maybe okay. there was a Jedi on the side lifting him up? Question mark? Was it someone else that we need to figure out? I, I don't know. Okay, coming up. More compelling and rich content from uh, Honolulu, including Sol J. Mayaba. He's from Honolulu, but he's in D.C., and we're in Honolulu. We're going to talk to him. This and we'll put a bow on day one in Hawaii. Yeah, four day more days one. for this, brother. It's 7.50 in the morning. I know. We have so much to all do here. All day. And you got Star Wars tonight. You can take a nap, okay? 
Take a nap. I will take a nap. This is BYU Sports Nation, live from the Sheridan in Hawaii. That starts at 1030 Mountain. Of course I have to take a nap. This segment of BYU Sports Nation presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. It is 7.52 a.m. Hawaii time on Friday, December yeah, have, 20th. It's all data. Just go whatever. This is awesome. You have plenty of time to subscribe, rate, and review the show wherever you choose to get your podcast. We appreciate all of you who are taking on BYU Sports Nation in that podcast format. It's great to have that audience Listen, as well. we had an issue with iTunes earlier this week. We think we fixed it. You can always go to the BYU TV and BYU Radio apps to get the last couple of shows. In the case of BYU Radio, you can listen to every single episode we've ever done. You can go back to the very beginning and listen to how terrible a show is at the beginning. September 2nd, 2013, <laughs> after BYU loses that deluge, awful mess in Virginia. Uh, and, uh, what a now, wonderful memory. And now, now look at Virginia. What an incredible <laughs> smell you've discovered. I should have been quoting Star Wars this whole time. That's my bad. I could have done that all day. Uh, uh, Soljay Mayava future BYU quarterback uh, and future guest of BYU Sports Nation. Yes, ap- apparently he, you know, he's mad that we're in Honolulu and he's not. So, well, he left here. I know, to, uh, yeah. of his own volition. We'll, we'll get him on the show in the next couple. Yes, of days. yes, we shall. Yeah, excited the, to talk to him. In the meantime, we're going to go back to Voice of the Nation and ask which BYU Cougar is most likely to be a Jedi. We already have uh, Jimmer in Ty Detmer Cosmo at Luke Bensley twelve on Instagram says. Micah Simon, okay. who's got all the skills. And I will say this about Micah. He's a healthy Jedi going into this bowl game, and he feels better than he has in quite a while. So it's he. we talk about benefiting from the rest. This is a guy that has really benefited from rest as he prepares not just for the bowl game, yeah. but for future endeavors. Yeah, he's, he's uh, broken out in a great way for BYU football this year. I want to mention this, too. We just had signing days. We attached stars and ratings to these guys, All-American, da 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 Ray was zero stars. She was a walk-on. She was nobody, right? But she's become a first-team All-American in the Star Wars world. Okay. Like, BYU needs more of those Rays, right? You need the Poe Dameron's. You need the Luke Skywalker's. You need the Vader's to, you know, come around. The tra- Harvey Long, he was at Utah awesomely. They come around. They're redeemed. They come to BYU, right? They come to the light <laughs> side, all that stuff. I, Ray was a walk-on, you know? You, you, need, you need Kylo Ren to come around. I, I, I haven't seen it, you know, but... You need you need those guys in the mix <laughs> where maybe they were one thing, but they become another. And what's fun is uh, Jeff Grimes was asked Wednesday about what's your experience been with and how do you evaluate these systems that rate players, but you recruit a guy and you evaluate them differently. And he said, well, I've coached three first-round picks alignment. Only one was a four-star. Another was a two-star and uh, another one started as a walk-on. So there are guys that can develop. And hopefully you see that in your walk of life, right, whether it's you or people close to you. Perhaps not evaluated in the same way that someone else yeah, would, but yeah. you can develop and you can become something great. And that's the case with BYU. Their system, their rating are, what, like 68 or 77? Like, BYU looks like they're a bad football team. But is BYU the 76th best football team in America right now? I don't know. The hope is that you're better than yeah. the Sagar rating would say of, the BYU is number 64. Right. So they're better than the rating, but you don't want to be 64th. BYU wants to be in the top 40. You wants USC to be top had, a, had the right? 78th rated recruiting class, right? 78. Well, it's halfway through December. Just, exactly. But I'm talking after spring. Okay. BYU still doesn't get rated highly. BYU's not top 40. All right. You know what I mean? So you can develop and be better than your rating is my point. Okay. Our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort. I'm surprised it took us this long to get to this guy. At COT underscore BYU football says on Twitter, Taysom Hill. Enough okay. said. Okay. I know he is former, but I think he still is the best Jedi BYU's ever had. And he's doing his best stuff in the NFL right now. This is the best we've seen Taysom Hill physically. Yes. A long time. Who was the Jedi that uh, progressed the most once he got to the professional ranks? Was it Obi-Wan Kenobi? <laughs> I wonder if that's Ben Kenobi. <laughs> the dumbest line in movie history. I wonder if, that's I wonder if they old, mean old, old Ben. Old ben Kenobi? With his very unique, specific last name. That's crazy. <laughs> How many Kenobis are there in this Star <laughs> Wars Tatooine. universe? On <laughs> You live in the middle of the desert, and you know a Kenobi. You're like, oh, oh my goodness! So stupid. 
Uh, we've got a special BYU Sports Nation show for you tomorrow Chewy, punch on it. Saturday. A BYU basketball pregame special, 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern. That's 5 yeah, to 6 go. Pacific. Let's we'll go. be live in Hawaii at 3 Hawaii time. Going to the, the Polynesian Cultural Center. Full coverage of the BYU football team after they arrive. Interviews from practice. Luau, Kalani Satake. See, I'm going to the Luau. Come on. Pearl Harbor. Yeah. Doing it. We're doing it on ESPN's a lot. ESPN's Quint Kesnich as oh, yeah. well. This is great. Gonna give him some cupcakes. Love it's it. It's fantastic. Today's rise and shout out. Share beer first. Captain James Cook for being the first outsider to discover Hawaii. Thank you. Yeah, this place is fantastic. My shout out goes to Kyle Morell, who's battling ALS. It was fun to talk about that play with Thor Salanoa and his perspective of that. Conversation continues 24 7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. No time do we have for time? Yeah, do we have no time, time for Dennis? Nope. All right. For Jeremiah Sutzer, shout out to the Solano family. BYU Sports Nation live from Hawaii tomorrow.